This is a bit of a impromptu cast for me, as like I said, I was covering. Um, so a little tired. We're starting off with the coffee. We got some energy drinks in the fridge. We'll try to we'll try to do coffee for this best of three, energy drink for the next one, and then when we get to the finals, uh, another energy drink if I'm still alive. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Worried about a strong support presence, LV Gaming, their last band will target the Disruptor, and then looking at Speed Gaming, they want to go with the Lion right now. That instant hex five, is going to be five, really five good seconds. at stopping Faceless Void. And honestly, if he goes like a 4-1-4 four, four build with the Lion, the instant hex mana drains not, not have a big mana problem. Just the Chrono complete. Tons of sable. You got the Wraith King Blast, you got the Rubik Lift, the Death Prophet Silence. A lot of that can be able to disrupt line. Stop the booster all as well. It's actually going to be a lifestealer pickup last here, and we'll see how they want to use that. That'll definitely relegate the Wraith King down to a support, but a support who will like to get a Blink Dagger. And uh, there's your lifestealer bomb between those two. You got the potential to do a lifestealer bomb with a Faceless Void, but that just seems a little awkward to me unless lifestealer hops out after the Chrono, which. Okay, that actually seems pretty good. So, we'll see if they try to use that. It's going to be ZOIF on the Life Stealer. Man, LV Gaming. They might not be the best, most known players. I know they picked up some people from, uh, what was it, the CIS team. They're one of the uh, less Chinese teams. Uh, but they got... Um, who was I Who was I targeting with that comment? In Flame, I believe, is the one they picked up. And they got some good, solid players that are well-known, like DDC. Demons, I know, is another young player, was a recent pickup. And I think Lin here, he's fantastic. He's really good, really fun to watch. Uh, and ZYF as well. Every time I've, I've tuned in to either watch or to cast LV, I just see ZYF win or lose doing so incredibly well. So we'll see what he can do on the Life Stealer. Uh, but before we get too far into this, I don't think I ever did introduce myself. Uh, so I'm Helium. You can follow me there on Twitter, Twitch, at Heliumbrella. Feel free to tweet during the cast. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns, criticism, whatever, I'll try to address it as we go through the evening. And this first BF3, BO3, I'll probably be remotely sane, but I don't know, man. I cannot... Uh, Vouch for the quality of the final game we cast tonight because it's going to be a long one for me. A complete all nighter. Uh, but, anyways, let's inter introduce the teams now. Of course, it's the Summit 2. We've got LV Gaming on the Radiance in this best of three. They're going to kick it off with In Flame in the middle lane on that Death Prophet. No Arcana, so he's not actually in flames. Uh, maybe we'll see Shadow Fiend later. DDC on the Rubik. Demons on the Wraith King. Those are the supports, and I'm looking forward. I already mentioned it a bit. ZYF. Handling the life stealer and well down here in the bottom lane. It's kind of a one roll It's a safe lane faceless void, but Basically, you know that appeases me. I said I like the off lane faceless void more if you're gonna go aggressive and, and then give void uh, The safe lane farm as long as you have another strong core hero to fall back on it I don't really mind. I just don't like when faceless voids your only option It, it seems like it rarely works as intended, but here we go speed gaming international Melody lovers are going to be supporting it up on the Ancient Apparition. We've got Lion. I believe that's Rain. I, I kind of checked on that, but never really did. It's Lion. Maybe played by Rain. Uh, we've got MZR here going to be handling the Spectre. Middle lane, it's going to be the Brewmaster there. And we've got uh, Seven Magic. LWY Seven Magic on the Nature's Prophet up against the Faceless Void. And... Nature's Prophet should be okay for a little while, but Void will get pretty scary, I would say, around level 4. With 2 in time walk, 2 in time lock. Walk him and lock him, you've got the potential to kill the Prophets. Oh, yes, pretty much no problem. Could go for that value point and backtrack as well, just to sort of win the trades and reduce some of the damage that he's going to be sustaining from the uh, just the pesky treants. Which are not as strong as they once were. Thankfully, they've lost their magic immunity there. As, uh, it's the Trilane. We saw it. We saw it going aggressive. It's up against the Spectre, Lion, Ancient Apparition, and this actually seems pretty decent, uh, defensively. You got the Earth Spike, AoE, the possibility for a Hex later on, and if things don't go your way, as you're the aggressors on the side of LV, and you're gonna pull out the Chilling Touch on three heroes, can get a little dangerous. Spectral Dagger, also good. If you ground target it, you can apply it to more than one target, so... Could get pretty dangerous. Decent damage on it as well. Not at level 1, but I don't know. It's actually not that great in damage, but it's damage nonetheless. And you can maybe see it turn some things around here. 
Oh my god, that got really cold. <laughs> Alright, coffee, equal, completed. Bottom lane checking in on the CS, as you see. Pretty even for right now. You've got uh, Nature's Prophet working on the start of a null Talisman. We'll see how he wants to go with that build. Obviously, we've seen some variations very recently uh, in what the Nature's Prophets are, are, are itemizing towards. Sometimes you'll see two basses and a... No, sorry. Uh, that's actually pretty damage efficient, but <laughs> anyways. Not really what we're going to see. Probably two Null Talismans and a Bass or just three Null Tallies. Uh, I prefer the first, first one mentioned. But here we're going to see the first blood. This tri lane is, well... Way off of their side of the lane, they strike in between the tier 1 and tier 2 towers up here in speed gaming safe lane, and they will bring down Melody Lovers, and, well, not really much he could do about that. You can't call him out for being out of positions, it's just he gets spotted out, and they really wanted to kill, and they find it. So first blood going over to LV Gaming, and probably we'll see a lot of the Ancient Apparition going down. I would expect they're going to want to gank him quite often. Bottom lane, we've got a conflict. This is where we're talking about. Can he win the trade? He does go for an early point in backtrack, and he's got the time walk to get out. Uh, as of right now, it will look like Nature's Prophet this with a slight out. edge there. He does have boots first as well. Yeah, same thing here. Getting pretty common on a lot of those core heroes. Lane with the boots, Orb of Venom, looking to uh, kite around 7 magic, and with the bash potential, Teleportation not guaranteed, so we'll probably see a kill in that lane pretty soon. As uh, looking at mid right now, very even there as well. 17 and 4 on the Death Prophet, that's in flame. Brewmaster at 17 and 1 as Death Prophet Crypt swarms. You can see her how quickly she can farm and isn't super dependent on right click. So even the value point, if we were to put one in Drunken Haze, you gotta wonder how, how good is it really gonna be against uh, a Death Prophet and the meta of runes and refilling your bottle. She's got the spam, she's not afraid to use it to get CS, and it's exactly what we see her doing right now is safe lane Lin, the Void will pick up the regen rune, Prophet looks for his, and it will be the Brewmaster to grab the rune up top, it's a bounty. And of course, that does refill the bottle. Which I wonder if they'll change. It would appear that they're trying to sort of remove bottle crowing with the rune changes and the changes to the courier, but I was a little surprised when I saw the bounty rune, uh, the fact that it was going to refill bottles. But I don't really have a problem with it either way. So we got to see a little bit of blood spilled already a little bit past the two minute mark there is it was zyf the core life stealer here that picked up the kill phase boots doesn't really been used forced to use any of his regen has a magic stick just in case they get a little frisky up here in the top lane checking out support levels sometimes you'll see those uh supports in the aggressive lane really fall behind and who's it going to be wraith king at level two right now and the other one we're looking for rubik up to level three and it's Basically the same on the other side, Ancient Apparition at 2, Lion at 3, so no difference yet, as we'll see DDC and Demons smoke up. They want to head over towards the middle lane. Oh no, they're actually going to smoke up. So Speed Gaming right now, they're like, alright, supports are gone. They might be rotating middle, they're going to call that. You never expect them to just bust the U-turn and come back to the top lane, but it doesn't look like... Alright, the Creep Wave is pushing, so it was a well-timed smoke as well. They got this lane here. They can go in for the gank. Smoke's gonna break. They will find the lion. The sheep goes out though, but they're not gonna be able to stop him from the Wraith Fire Blast. Nature's Prophet gonna TP in as well. It's DDC and Treble taking the most damage from this, and he is gonna fall. And now the lion looks like he will drop. Lifestealer gonna be able to chop him down. Demon's gonna hightail it the other way. They dealt a split. They don't want to give up any more kills, and it's you know it's biting three heroes' time right now. But they will find the kill on demons unless is there a rune waiting for him? He's got five seconds. It's gonna spawn. It could be an RNG rune. No. Seven magic gonna find the right click and get him down now to the middle lane. The primal split goes out in flame in trouble. Oh, thought that was a Yule's already at six minutes. A bit early. That's the storm panda with the cyclone. Throws him up, puts him back down, but can't get the kill on the first primal split. Gonna be wasted. Puts a lot of pressure on the Death Prophet, though. She is farming quite well, and goes bottom. We'll find the bounty. We'll refill the bottle, and after all that Primal Split and all the work, all the micro that the Brewmaster had to put into that, all for naught, as Inflames back to mid, back to full HP, and back to farming. DDC is going to hang around as well and maybe try to pick up some XP. Once they get that level 6, he'd love to steal himself a Primal Split. Bottom lane now. You can see Nature's Prophet. He did roam off. He's been maintaining a pretty even uh, CS score down there. He's 29 and 3. You got the Void at 34 and 3. 
slightly ahead, but you got a kill and an assist on the Nature's Prophet. He's doing great. They'll let Lion go down there, soak up a bit of that XP. So the supports, they try to dissolve the uh, the tri lanes. As I'm surprised we even see a tri lane here. The last time I was in the the Chinese qualifiers for the summit, it was all two one twos, all duo lanes all day as Lion. The first chrono of the game will go off from Lin and. Face this void, it finds the kill. That's Demons who's rotated down to the bottom lane. They'll leave Life Stealer off lane with his phase boots. He's getting a little bit aggressive there with the Spectre, and she finishes her phase boots as well. We'll see if she decides to go for the urn or for the drum. Either choice, not a bad one. Preferring the urn a little bit these days. TP's coming mid. Looks like we might see a bit of a brawl. Brewmaster lift up, thrown back down towards the enemy, and that TP, was it canceled, or...? Disruptor was banned, so I know there wasn't a glimpse. Maybe I'm seeing things. Give math jokes. Uh, we'll, we'll work on it. We'll, we'll get there. We'll find a math joke, I'm sure, sometime the, during this evening. Or I'm sure I'll just screw up doing math, and that'll be enough of a joke right there. Up top, ZYF, Rage, TP out. Nicely done, and well, that's honestly what makes Lifestealer a pretty good offlaner, because if the right click isn't there, he's a strength hero, and he's got seven armor as he picks up the Helm of Iron Will. Five armor on that one. I feel like the armor that Armlet gives you is probably the least talked about component of the item. Everyone talks about the active on Holy Strength, how good it can be to toggle, how good it once was, but no one really talks about the armor. It does make you kind of a tanky beast. Also kills you, so I don't know. Double-edged sword, most definitely. Yep, working towards that. Yules, as you would expect here for Inflame. We're at nine minutes. CS leader still in flame. Right behind him is his own teammate, Lin. The Nature's Prophet, yep, there he is, going for the, uh, the filthy Null Talisman build. We'll see if he goes for the Blade Mail or, or what he's gonna do. It looks like he'll pick up a Chain Mail, so it could be quite a few things. Medallion or Mech are what come to mind, or Blade Mail, that other one, the more popular one, probably what he will go for. I wouldn't be super surprised if he goes for a Mech, but I wouldn't really expect it. Because, I mean, you don't see Lion getting one anytime soon, and... Ancient Apparition, you know what he's doing, Brown Boots Axe, but we'll hold that thought up top. ZYF trying to play the bait, and he'll do it well. MZR, the open wounds, the lift up, the throw back, the Wraith Fire Blast to connect as well. He will drop, but Nature's Prophet showing up. Trying to bring down In Flame, who's also rotated, and won't be able to get it. One right click away, it wasn't enough. Another blast. That's all the mana for demons, but it doesn't matter. That's two kills. They try to chase Lion a little bit further. Earth Spike to detour him, and, well, team fight recap. There we go. Wraithfire Blast and Exorcism, the two of the alts online that were used there, using the slightly condensed team fight recap. So, what is that, about a 1,200 gold change? 1,400 XP in favor of LV Gaming here at 10 minutes. So we'll flip it to Net Worth. Net Worth leader, no surprise. ZYF on the Lifestealer at 4.2k, as I say it, in Flames takes over at 4.3, and the Void at 4.1. So a Tricore lineup that's this strong, leading this early, very good position they find themselves in, but never count out the Spectre, haunting in right now, Lin, forcing the time walk out. Won't get anything for the troubles the of the Chronosphere. So gonna be on cooldown right now, trying to retreat back. Desolate damage gonna be cancelled as Rubik shows up, and MZR gonna back off nicely done perfect timing there gets off the cliff do they have a quelling blade i don't understand the quelling blade on specter it seems so necessary like how many times you juke in the trees and then you're like i'm stuck <laughs> can get awkward all right nt's in some trouble the hex will go out onto demons but it's not gonna matter that's one point in open wounds and well eight second duration at all levels that's ridiculous. I feel like I haven't seen Life Sealer in a little while. Obviously not too popular anymore, but eight seconds. Didn't realize it was that long. Rage, of course, uh, maxed out as well, so a six second duration on that. Two points in Feast. About all you need. We'll see what he wants to uh, wants to do. Obviously, Life Sealer was once the carry of all carries, so Open Wounds was one of the abilities that was nerfed. It's range scaling, so I would expect the points to come to Open Wounds. But we'll see. That'll be up to him. Armlet finished right now. 
So he's ready to go. That's one thing that's always been fantastic about Lifestealer and remains fantastic. How early he can get online and how dangerous he can be in the early engagements. I mean, basically a medium charge BKB Radiance built into the hero, plus attack attacked. speed, plus a slow, and lifesteal? Like, do you even need Life items on this guy? Yes, you do. You need a few, but he's got them and he's ready to go. He gets started early. ZYF. Not done killing yet. He's already 4-0 and 1. He's dominating in just 12 minutes. And looking at the Spectre, that's his competition, really. 3.1k, about 2,000 gold behind. Does go for the urn as what seems to be the most popular item right now for the Spectres. Mainly because you farm, it gives you some mana regen. And if you, you haunt in, you get a kill, you get some urn charges. You earn yourself back up, get your health back, and walk back to farming. As opposed to... Haunt, fight, run back to base, run back or TP back to the lane to farm. Well, now you don't need to. You got the urn with you. You can just heal yourself up and get back to farming Guys, faster. So it seems to be the more popular uh, item at the moment. And that's, I believe, the uh, general consensus behind it. That's a spooky, spooky sound right now. Where is... Oh, it's running out. I was like, what is going on? Alright, so Exorcism just attack. used. Just running out there. Get some flame back to full HP if he was even hurt. They want to push the tier 1. They've already gotten this one in the bottom lane. Nature's Prophet there still farming. Not going to bother with top as Tower goes down and ZYF to last it. Again, catapulting himself forward. 6.1k on the charts. Another 1,500 in the bank as Boo, the Courier. It's a sick courier, man. Oh, there's kills in the middle lane. We could be looking at couriers. MZR, and it could be a big one. No, MZR will live. Lin, trying to get out of this one now. We'll get... We'll escape the cold feet. Wrath of Nature coming in. He's pretty fast. Treads. Oh, and he will go down. That was a long, long attack. What, 600 range? You got it. He's no Lena, but Nature's Prophet can attack from a distance as well. And it's enough for the kill. Looking at the change. 1,200 experience for that. That's a big one. They will find MZR, though, on the tail end, so... That's... Basically, your three roll void for a one roll Radiant's Spectre and Speed Gaming, they're the team that's behind, attack. so the trade is still not terrible, as you can see already, 4,000 gold behind. 3,000 experience at just over 14 and a half minutes. Just under. Damn it. I was trying to time it. I failed. Fortify in the middle lane. Refresh from the tower falling upstairs. Now they go to the mid level of the house. They're in the stairwell, I guess. Uh, working on the, the tier 1 in the middle lane here, and it looks like they'll get it basically without contest. We'll see the Ice Blast gets thrown out from the Ancient Apparition. Tries to deter them, but won't be able to. Red King gets the tower hit. He's going to be thrown out by the Yules. That's the Brewmaster looking to chase. Wants to get off a very, very worthwhile Primal Split, but won't find the opening for it. So, forced to run away. At least he gets to farm away. If he's already got his Blink Dagger up, and I'll try to be a little bit better with the items. Uh, we'll pull up the screen here and look over it. If you miss anything during this, I can't please everybody. Some people want the items, so we gotta go for the items. I want the items. So we got the Yule Scepter up on Inflame. That's the uh, Death Prophet. We'll look at her first. Winning team gets precedent on the items, because they're the ones that will have them. Uh, he's got the Yules. Mask of Madness already up for the Void, along with the Treads, as well as that pretty sweet Cranium. Uh, looking at the ZYF, the net worth leader right now. He's probably going S and Y race car build. Got the armlet phase already. Sanj in the inventory. Rubik just picking up an urn. I've said it once. I'll say it again. If you don't have an urn on your team in 6.82, you're playing it wrong. So he picks up that urn. Uh, we'll look over to Demons, who's got treads. Just finished it up, and we'll be looking for the Blink Dagger next if they can bring down some of the tier twos. Obviously, that gold bounty on towers reduced a little bit, so you will see later Blink timings uh, up on the support. Ports. Bit of a side effect there, and obviously intended. Uh, Melody Lovers support items. But he's got his ultimate, that's what really matters right now. Nature's Prophet, there it is, Null Null Blade Mail. Phase Urn on the Spectre, expected that as well. We got the Brew down here, Treads Blink, that's basically who we started with, and Tranquil Boots. Lion, the one hero made of ice that likes Tranquil Boots. Centaur as well, so I guess... I really want Tranquil Boots to be made of ice, but... It's not going to happen, I don't think. 7 and 3, the score as they work for the first tier 2. The exorcism's thrown out. They got Radiant's those cosmetic ghosts. Let's check, Let's check them out. Let's check them out. The Outland Witch's Spirits. 
uncommon, not bad, but here we go. More importantly, Brewmaster are going to jump in, throws out the Primal Split, but it's Lin that jumps in and stops the entire enemy team. There's no follow-up there, and Brewmaster not quite able to kill Inflame yet. Had an Invis rune anyway. Rubik and Void will still fall. He disrupted the team fight a lot, but he was still in a little too far over his head. And there's the Wraith King, going to take a fall, respawning. This is a good reincarnate onto four of the enemy heroes. Now ZOAF going to get started, going to start the fight with the Rage Armlet, and let's see if he can get those toggles and go back in. Magic trying to TP out, Wraithfire Blast is there, ZYF will go back in, toggling on, gotta watch out for the Brewmaster, Hidden Fest does not do a very efficient job at that, but he Armlet's back up, medium amounts of health right now, and will be down the Brewmaster, so just showing how versatile you can be with the Armlet, and honestly, wasn't that good of an armlet toggle because he tried to do the uh, toggle off to infest but he didn't really do it so he got his HP back and then I don't know it was weird uh, I don't think that's what was quite intended but it works out he will TP back to base he lives 7-0 and 2 what is that wicked sick already at just 17 minutes 11 to 6 the score illusion rune top also top the casualties there I guess Death Prophet died as well, but Lin and Rubik respawn, and they'll go back top. Lin uh, going to be farming up. Looks like he'll be going for the BKB as well. Wrath of Nature actually brings down the Wraith King. Who else was involved in that? Ah, Finger of Death was thrown out, so he did miss that a little bit. Eyes peeled to the mini-map. Clearly, they weren't, but we'll try. Whew, it is hot in here. I put up some, uh, some custom, cheap sound paneling, so you might notice, if you're watching the other day, you can maybe notice, hopefully, an increase in quality, audio quality of the mics, uh, but the side effect is, this is essentially insulation, and it is freaking hot in here, uh, anyways, the sacrifices we casters make for you guys, LV, still pushing top. Also, they said this stuff was non-toxic, but in case it isn't and I'm dead in two more games, we know the cause. Uh, I was lied to if these happen to be toxic. I don't think they are. Anyways, MZR in trouble. They will bring down the tower. Now they look to get a big priority kill here. The Yule Scepter start things off. There's the Chrono to cancel the TP. A little bit of a blind Chrono, but had it on good authority that it was there in the tree line. And Lin will take an Ice Blast, but is in no danger. What's stolen? Spectral Dagger stolen by the Rubik. And uh, ZYF finishes the S and Y. Man, I remember when Rubik first came out. It was either when Rubik first came out or Spectre first came out, whichever was first. But when Rubik would steal Spectral Dagger, he would have uh, he would have no terrain collision for the entire game. <laughs> it was so broken. Uh, it was actually it took a while for them to fix it. I feel like we are a couple internationals. I think we're like three. Yeah, it's got to be three internationals past that. Mana Boots coming out for the Rubik. Mana Boots earned. Good way to start things off. We'll probably see a Blink or a Force Staff coming up next. There's the smoke, though, for Speed Gaming. They're behind. About 8,000 gold and close to that on experience or one of those ways. They'll find demons first. That is just a support, but it's a five-minute reincarnation time. He will go down in the fray, but the only casualty. One support. Make it two for two right now on both teams. The supports have fallen. They will get Lin as well. Nicely done utilizing uh, that brewling and ZYF trying to get away. He is a big kill. Trying to armlet toggle to stay alive. The negative earn charges and they won't be able to get him. It was a blind spectral dagger and he'll miss it. ZYF's going back in on this he's raged up oh this is risky the life seal oh that's a good toggle he gets it now double damage on in flame coming back in the yule scepter up toggle back on trying to get through that drunken brawler and will be able to with this strong right click this time showing that's the example of good armlet toggling there and will get all the kills and team fight recap it started off fantastic for speed gaming and still went reasonably well they lose four LV Gaming lose only three and will be at about 500 XP for the better and 400 gold. So, Speed Gaming using a smoke, trying to get back into the game. High risk, high reward. It, well, actually it wasn't that high risk because they got out relatively unscathed. But they will fall a little bit further behind at the end of the day. Blade Mail triggered up before the Chrono went off. So good timing. That doesn't allow Lin with the Mask of Madness uh, online to, to go in for this kill. But, well, Demon's an Inflamer here as well. Sprouting up. Demons should shatter. Oh, that's a big ice blast. 
Reincarnate gonna put... Oh, that sucks. Reincarnate now on a five-minute cooldown. He was probably looking for something this stun, but with 600 mana, he couldn't do it. Couldn't possibly run out of mana, so... A little unfortunate. That's a really big ultimate to be used, and he just got level 11, so the five-minute cooldown, while he has just picked up rank 2 Reincarnate, it's actually really big, and... Maybe could allow Speed Gaming to find themselves a proper fight, but they need to focus ZOIF a little bit more. He's just making too many good plays. Uh, they need to stop him. So far, it ain't happening. 9, 0, and 4. Already beyond godlike. LV's like, come on. I want to go check out the BTS house. Let's just get this over with. Obviously a long road ahead of them before they can even qualify. Uh, but good chance. If I had to pick a favorite through the bracket, um... It'd actually be LGDC deck, but I got LV as number two. That's my prediction, if you'll allow me. The prediction here, the, the pre-game, that analysis that's happening mid-game, I, I would have said the finals for this four-team bracket would be LV Gaming versus LGDC deck, but we'll have to wait and see. We're only in the first game of a potential nine tonight, as Lion's in trouble. There's an Invis rune. Uh, you never expect the Death Prophet coming in there. Got an Atos. Why not? You know you're ahead when you're picking up an Atos. Sure, it's a pretty good item, but is it the best for Death Prophet? No, I would say no. Definitely it's not. It's a completely individual item. It does nothing for your team. It's not an aura. It's not uh, a Shiva's Guard or anything like that that's going to benefit the team. It's not super, super tanky to keep you alive in the team fights like a heart. It's relatively tanky because it's got a Vit Booster in it. Uh, but I like it. I can't complain. That item is sick. I wish we'd see more of it. And of all the items that need maybe adjusted, it was Vanguard until recently. Crimson Guard now a thing. Uh, but I would say Atos. I'd like to see uh, a new look at that item. Ooh, Chrono. Looks like he caught himself in it. <laughs> I think it was the Cold Feet, though, that was holding him in place. Obviously Void. Not gonna get caught in his own Chronos. Or Rubik's, for that matter. But tonight they're on the same team. And there's the big kill. Spectre goes... And gets the kill on the life stealer. Godlike streak. And look at that team fight recap. For one kill with what two people nearby? It's two thousand experience, two thousand gold just for that. So that's a big swing of things. Is it gonna be big enough? As already pushing a ten thousand gold advantage. They will find in flame up top. He's working on the tier three, gets it down to like a fifth of its HP, so I would say the tower damage there to a for another. So in the last two seconds, basically. There's been about a 4,000 gold in experience change off of just two kills. So, 6.82, B. Um, yeah, the comeback meta. It's very real. And you'll see the big jump. It takes a little while to, to go onto the graphs, but it's good in there. That should help. Oh, the sound of a Wraith King farming. Is there anything more pleasant? I don't know. There's definitely things less pleasant. The sound of Terrorblade farming. Not only do you see that if it's on the enemy team and you're like, we're gonna lose. Uh, but it just sounds really annoying. I don't know. I can't can't stand it. And uh, no Terrorblade this game. I believe he was banned. Uh, as we saw a couple times the Terrorblade... Uh, showed up in the first day of the the china qualifiers here for the summit 2 and it was played i would say not very well i don't know the chinese scene doesn't seem to have the hero quite figured out lgdc deck i think they've got it but so far for the other teams going for that you know almost naked radiance i don't like it i think the hero's basically farming just as fast with like a wraith band and a yasha i don't really think you need the radiance and you can actually still be a little useful in the early game if you get like a Manta BKB and definitely want to look towards the Scotty as well. Uh, so the build variations on that hero I think are very important. Little treants that could, trying to bring down the Roche, I think they're in a little over their head. Maybe someday. As uh, the genuine Oc Oculopus will turn into Hollow Jack. I do like the courier change a lot. That, that keeps things in line with Dota 1 a little bit more. Being able to randomize the courier was so awesome in Dota 1. Uh, and now that it basically randomizes to whatever you have. Oh, Nature's Prophet saw it, though. 
Ho ho ho! He misses a courier, so now we can just accuse him of cliff jungling. You know what you want? He wanted that camp. He wanted the cliff jungle, but his team was like, come on! Get out of there. Nah, just kidding. Good reactions, though, for LV keeping tabs on their courier. It, I mean, it wouldn't have lost any items. You can see there's nothing in the courier's inventory, but hey, it's 175 Dyer's gold times five. Is under it ain't bad. Dyer's and the graph, they finally kicked in. It fell up 3k gold, and you can see Radiance about the same in experience there. So, Speed Gaming. They've got it in them. They can find the pickoffs, and they could probably still win a team fight here, but it is going to be pretty hard for them. Uh, but it's also going to be hard for LV to break into the high ground. All the outer towers have already fallen, and we'll see the smoke up for Speed Gaming. They're aware something must be going on. It's the Roche, but it's already gone on. The party's over. Aegis over to the Lifestealer. He's got a Basher up as well. And uh, that, that'll that prompt me. We'll check out some more of the items. Blade Mail, the Prophets, the other Prophet, the Prophet of Nature. Um, Demon's got a Blade Mail, pretty common up there. We'll maybe look for the Blink Dagger now to get the Life Sealer Bomb online. BKB on Inflame, really good pickup. BKB on Lin, great pickup as well. We talked about how, uh, how dangerous the Instant Hex can be to the Faceless Void. Looks like DDC on the Rubik will be looking for a, d a pretty defensive pickup. Just going for the uh, the Force Staff there. Necronomicon a level 3 on the Nature's Prophet along with his Blade Mail Null Tally build. He goes pretty much all early game with that and he's 4, 3, and 5 so you can see that it was effective and the Necro looked to push down some towers. The Radiance on the Spectre, sorry guys, that was a big pickup and... I think it came out just like three to four minutes ago. Radiant yeah, we can see. Let's actually compare his GPM. We can figure it out. GPM, about 360. We'll just round it up to 400. Uh, so, yeah, about three minutes ago, three and a half minutes ago, he picked up the Radiance based on uh, the 1400 gold in the bank. So, yeah, that was about the average time I, I mentioned on the draft, I believe, the 24 minute mark. So he got it. He's farming well. And that's attack. what a lot of teams will let a Spectre do. They're like, eh, we don't really care about stopping the Spectre too much. We'll just end the game before Spectre's really a threat. But pretty hard to do these days. The comeback meta, like we've mentioned, the gold changes. The bounty changes when you're behind. So it's a really big deal. And that allows Spectre, even if he didn't farm incredibly well, one high ground defense equals one more big item for Spectre. And Spectre, you know thought of as one of the scariest late game heroes so they definitely still have it in him to get this life sealer will pick off the nature's prophet elsewhere that's in the bottom lane with the help of lynn and up top though it's going to be rubik ddc to fall demon's going to tp out with the blade mail on in flame now just trying to truck it can use the bkb and tp out it's exactly what it's going to do the desolate damage is pretty scary the crit as well but in flame gets out and well, being this far ahead, BKB charged to survive, well worth it. Teamfight recap, uh, we'll see. Barely in favor. That's a kill on a Rubik. To just one on a Nature's Prophet, and it's Speed Gaming who almost come out ahead. They do come out ahead in gold, although very minimal at this point, and only uh, could fall 200 more XP behind after those events. Ravian's top tower is under attack. The Maelstrom now going to be coming out for the Void. He took a bit of a detour. He'll go for the BKB after the Mask of Madness and Treads. And now he's got the Maelstrom. So a little bit of more AoE potential. A little bit more single target damage as well with the Lightning procs. The Chain Lightning goes a long way. And we'll see what he wants to do. Whether he finishes a full Mjolnir or if he'll go for the AC uh, afterwards. Either way, Hyperstone probably the next item. If not just a TP scroll. Uh, obviously, we're not really counting that. So I would say Hyperstone is probably Lin's next item, based on what I've seen him do before. I think he likes to go for the AC at this uh, junction. Ravian's top tower is under attack. Top tower is under attack. That's the Nature's Prophets doing. Seven magic working for that. Tier 3 tower, though, in the middle lane in danger. The one in the top lane has already fallen for Speed Gaming, so they're going to be without the two towers. They're not going to try to contest this, and they will! The ultimate goes on to the end flame, but he will survive without even using the BKB. He'll throw it out now. Link is a four-man chrono, and now the... Oh, the exorcism is just tearing everybody apart. Speed game, but they lose three. The only buyback on the Brewmaster. Forced out about instantly. Demon's going to be caught here, but he wants to die. He wants to get his reincarnate and use it. It's a fantastic teamfight ultimate. There it is. Slowing everybody down. The Necro units, though, they're going out. They're hunting. They want some kills. They'll focus ZYF. It's not enough, though. They will bring down... What was that, the lion just exploding there? Nature's Prophet will kill the other Prophet, the Prophet of Death. Nature not too much of a fan of that. Ah, actually, that's not really fair. Um, Lin in trouble, negative Herne Charge. Can't time walk out of it, but the Herne Charge is going to be enough to kill him. It's MZR with uh, a double kill there, but 
did buy back. Spectre buy back. Brew buy back. And they lose the tier 3. So we'll check the team fight recap out. This is when I'm happy it exists because stuff like that gets complicated. Yeah. Four people die on speed gaming. There's two buybacks. And only three falling there for LV. It's a positive gold chain for them. And actually a positive experience. About 2,000 experience for speed gaming. So they do hold on, but it's at a high cost. 14,000 gold is what LV is pushing as its lead. About 7,500 experience. Whoa, DDC playing crazy. That's his own four staff that put him forward into a death trap. I don't know if Lay Stealer looks like he was inside and Fest is off a cooldown. I didn't quite notice, but that's your Aegis. So he had the Aegis, didn't even have to use it in the last team fight. It looks like he'll be going down again. He's going to try to attack and get up some life steal, but the stun goes, and Rage was on cooldown there, so not much he could have done. He will fall. Big kill. 2,000 gold, 2,000 uh, experience, a little under. Plus or minus like 200, yeah. Basically, plus or minus 200 every time I report that. Fine tuning, it is. Doesn't really seem worthwhile. 5,000 in the bank right now for LWY, the man with the seven magics. Check out current gold. Yep, he's got the most of it. Spectre's got a lot as well saved up, even after the buyback. They do find some kills afterwards. They win that team fight. She got a double, so probably bought back and actually earned more than she had in the first place. But uh, 3,800 in the bank. We'll see what she wants to look towards next. Racer for a drum. That seems casual from earlier on in the game. Um, probably a heart, I would guess. Heart or Manta. That's what I would build next. Both would seem okay. Heart may be a bit better just to survive the chrono. However, Heart is always a little scary because of this little ability on a life stealer. It's called Feast, and it does 7% damage. 70% uh, of the enemy's current HP back in damage. So if you have a Heart, you have a lot of current HP. So can definitely increase the damage potential of an enemy life stealer, but I don't know if that's enough reason to not get a heart. Either way, it'll be the Manta. I like it. Uh, and the reasoning for that, sometimes if you don't go Radiance, I really just like Manta first. It's like Phase Drums uh, earn Manta. Pretty solid build as well. Uh, if you want to get it done more so in the Earth game. But Desolate will transfer to your Manta Illusions, which equals lots of damage uh, if you can find someone alone. And that's maybe the reason to not do it, right? Because it's hard to find alone, especially with uh, N6.81. Here we go, team fight, they're trying to break the high ground. Brewmaster dead for 80, because he did just buy back, so additional time being added to that time burn. Lion's gonna fall somewhere, Wraith King will bring him down. Tree and Spawn to try to slow him down. Demons will go forward. Rod of Owie out there onto a 7 magic. Will slow down Demons, but his ultimate's back off a cooldown, so he would like to die in traffic, and yeah, actually might get his wish. The Necro trying to bring him down here. Nature's Prophet falls, will buy back. Oh, well, useless reincarnate, but I don't know if it's going to matter here. Two down for at least 20 more seconds, and that's the Morax to fall. Tier 3 tower up top's already been picked up, and Melody Lover's another rod of Atos usage will not be enough to secure the kill. It's right time it gets it. And they'll swing top. ZYF going to go straight onto the melee barracks. And it looks like this could be the end of our very first game in uh, the Summit 2 trying to qualify us for the evening. It's a best of three LV versus Speed Gaming and it looks like LV. Well, I would say probably the favorite team here. We'll be taking game one. They'll find MZR and they'll bring him down basically no problem. Pretty much one chrono is enough to bring him down. That's the damage output of Lin. So find the poor, poor line as well and it's 30 to 18. You, you gotta expect the tap out pretty soon from Speed Gaming. They will persevere, though. Oh, double damage bottom. How nice. Speed gaming. Probably not going to be the team to get it. LV, however? Like, yeah. Why not? Let's check Roche, too. Maybe it's up. Oh, double damage and a haste? Does life get better than this? Probably not. It really doesn't. That's magnificent. There's the heart. But we've seen the Atos do some work, so we can't complain about the item pickup too much. I mean, technically, I could complain about whatever I want. You guys are at my mercy, but... Yeah. Abyssal Blade done. Working for the AC, probably without Hyperstone. Brief item checkup, as... Honestly, doesn't matter now. With speed Gaming 2 racks down. I mean, the comeback, it's still possible, but... 
one percent chance honestly not a good one um maybe a little higher i don't have a stack guy with me maybe uh once people start waking up again here we'll, we'll pull one in the deviant stat boys they do a fantastic job by the way Radiance, blink, blink. We'll just pull up the item chart. You can look at it yourself. We've got nine games ahead, and it's a solo. I don't need to destroy my voice that much. <sighs> they will smoke up, and there he goes. The Chrono is going to jump out. You don't expect the smoke into the high ground when your towers are down at, at this time of the game. I don't know, maybe you should have been. Nothing they could have done about it, as of course True Sight doesn't work with that, and the instantaneous stuff of the Ancient Apparition and the Nature's Prophet well, put LV in, in quite a good position. Bottom tower has fallen. Looking for the Mega Creeps. SPG though, still trying to fight. The BKB goes out, trying to make use of the full 10 second charge, being efficient, but he will get bashed up, and he's not even looking after the Primal Split. The active of the Abyssal comes out as well, and he was like, all right, now we'll call the GG. They're tapping out. The GG to be called here, so LV looking very, very good as they start off this best of three here. The Summit 2 Qualifiers brought to you by GTA.com. Check it out if you want a game for PC, console, whatever, that's your one-stop shop, and of course, 100TB.com as well. Check it out. And as always, shout out to Beyond the Summit for having me on. I'm sort of substituting here for Mott Dota, so if you were expecting Mott, I'm sorry you got me. If you wanted me, then